What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video today. In today's video, I'm going to be covering five reasons as to why your Google Ads might not be performing very well. This covers Google Ads in general, shopping, search, performance max, the lot. So if you are struggling with Google Ads at the moment, definitely watch all this video. I'm going to be giving you five things you can take a look at and changes you can make today to improve your results with Google Ads. Now just before we jump into it, if you are new around here, make sure to subscribe. And please do drop a like down below it really does help the channel out and if you've got any more detailed questions that you want answering feel free to drop me a message on twitter and instagram i'll, I'll leave links to those in the description down below now the reason i'm making today's video is because i have received a lot of messages especially over the last week about people struggling with google ads and not seeing results i've been in the same boat as you i'm sure everyone has who runs google ads so I'm going to be sharing with you five things that I take a look at and do with my sites and my Google Ads accounts to improve results. Now jumping into the first thing here, and it's quite an obvious one, but I cannot stress enough how important this is, and that is to make sure your Google Ads conversion tracking is set up properly. Essentially making sure your Google Ads account is tracking every single conversion or sale correctly and reporting it in your account, because if not, you are going to see massive issues with performance, obviously massive issues with Google conversion tracking, and I'm going to be showing you in a minute the problems you can face if this isn't set up correctly. Now, like I said, this is one of the most, if not the most important thing to make sure you have installed correctly on your ad account and your website. I advise getting this sorted before you even touch Google Ads and start running ads, but if you are already watching this and you do notice an issue with conversion tracking, please make sure you watch all this snippet here because it really will help you out. I learned the hard way with this. After launching my USA site for three to four months, the first three to four months of me running that store last year, my Google conversion tracking wasn't set up correctly. I thought it was until I started running ads and only noticed Google reporting about 50% of the conversions in my campaigns, which is obviously a big, big problem. If Google aren't seeing all the conversions, it is gonna be harder for it to optimize and you are then gonna have issues with running campaigns that do have things like a target CPA or a target ROAS because if Google's not seeing all those conversions correctly, you're not gonna be able to see the correct data and they're not gonna be able to use the correct data to optimize your campaigns. So like I said, three to four months on this site, I ran without a proper conversion tracking. And because of this very, very simple issue, I was not profitable for three to four months on this site. I was breaking even. Luckily, I was breaking even and I wasn't making a loss. But I know some people, a lot of people, if you're in the same boat, you might be suffering at a loss just because you haven't got this set up correctly. Now, in a matter of 24, 48 hours after I got this issue fixed, I was seeing very good results and it essentially lifted up that barrier on that account and I was able to scale and grow this business very, very well with Google. Now this does involve coding and things like that that I don't know how to do myself. I simply went onto Fiverr, contacted a web developer and he literally sorted it out for me in 10 to 15 minutes. He just, he just looked through my site, told me what was missing in my code. He sent me a piece of code that I just literally needed to add to my Shopify theme and it fixed it. And since then on, it was tracking conversions correctly. Now I do keep in touch with the developer on Fiverr. I'm gonna leave his link at the top of the description. If you need conversion tracking set up for you, or if you just need it um, fixing for you, if your current conversion tracking isn't working properly, just shoot this guy a message. He'll get back to you very quickly. He'll resolve it very quickly for you. And that's one less thing to worry about. Once it's fixed, that's it. You don't need to worry about it again. So top of the description, I'll leave a link to Fiverr to the developer that I use to get this resolved and he will get that all sorted for you. Now next up is optimizing your product data feed. This is essentially the feed you're submitting to Google Merchant Center. That includes all the data about the products you're trying to sell on Google Shopping. You know, things like image, price, title, description, categories, brand, you know, that sort of thing. Now launching with basic titles and descriptions that are very, very limited with the keywords they include will limit your reach with Google. It's as simple as that. And even worse than this, so many people launch their Google shopping campaigns with no SEO titles and descriptions. And I'm gonna show you the importance of those in a minute and briefly explain what they are. Now, SEO titles and descriptions are different from your Shopify product title and your Shopify product description. These are the titles that Google use to show your ads to the right people on Google shopping and Google search, mainly Google shopping we're talking about here. It essentially allows you to give Google a keyword rich title and description so you can make sure your products are being shown for the correct search terms and are being presented to the correct audience for your product. Now, all you need to do to make sure you're submitting an SEO title or 
SEO description to Google Merchant Center is to simply scroll down to the bottom of any product page on your Shopify admin, essentially where you edit the product data and stuff. Right at the bottom, you'll, you'll have a section that is titled SEO title, SEO description. You can then go ahead and use Google Keyword Planner to find keywords related to the product and keywords you want to include in the title. Now, a piece of advice, don't just essentially bullet point loads of keywords. That isn't really the best way to do it. I always make sure that the title and description make grammatical sense rather than just bullet pointing all these keywords because that doesn't really help and I, and I don't think Google likes that anyway. But if you try and get as many keywords into that title and description as possible, you'll be expanding your reach. But most importantly, it will allow you to get your product in front of the right audience. And now this isn't the only way you can optimize your product feed. There are so many other ways you can do it too. I might make a full video on every area you can improve, but a couple of other things to mention is the images you're using and, and most importantly, the main product image you are submitting to Google. So for example here, I've just searched on Google Corner Desk. It's this image here that is very important because this is the first image your potential customer is gonna see. If you're giving Google very low quality, just poor images here, your click through rate's gonna be bad. People are not gonna wanna click on that product if it's got a terrible image. So why not just order the product to your house if it's small enough? Take some pictures on your iPhone. You know, the camera's good enough on there. You can set it up as a lifestyle image. There are so many different ways you can make an attractive looking product image just on your own. You don't need to hire photographers or any experts like that. Most of my products, I take images myself and having that high quality image and presentation definitely allows you to stand out from the competition. Another thing to consider is price tweaking. Now I always advise with Google, you don't need to be the cheapest on Google Shopping to see success. I mean, just off the top of my head, I'm probably not the cheapest on any of the products I sell on Google, but obviously still see really good results. Now having a combination of high quality images and a solid landing page, coupling those with a premium price, you are creating a high perceived value product. And by doing this, customers are gonna be willing to pay a higher price for that because of the way you're presenting your product to them. If you've got terrible images, a terrible description and a terrible looking website, customers aren't gonna to wanna to pay a premium for the product. But if you're presenting your product in such a good way, by including very good images, you know, videos, GIFs, outlining the key benefits of your product and how it'll improve their lives essentially, this creates a high perceived value and will allow you to charge a higher price. But going back to the previous point with Google, it all starts with that image. That's the first thing a customer is going to see when they search for a product. And having a high quality image that stands out is going to earn you that click. And then it's all about your website to generate the actual conversion. So there are lots of areas you can definitely work on with optimizing your product feed here. And like I said, this is a common strategy I use with my best sellers. It's a good way to do it is charge a cheap price to begin with, but as you're getting conversions and building up that data, just increase your price every so often. Some products I started, for example, at $45, they're now selling for $68 because over time I've made the images better, I've made the landing page better, and my conversion rate hasn't dipped even though I've increased the price of some products you know, by 20, 30, 40%. But if you are just starting out, it, it is often good to charge a cheaper price, but please do not think you need to be the cheapest to see any success. If you follow this step here, you should be okay. Now, next up is something that a lot of people again ask me is, you know, how much should I be spending on a product before I kill it? Now, I just want to say I very rarely kill products on Google. By that, I mean just completely removing them from my website and campaigns. If you watched my previous video, I did touch on this a little bit, but we'll go over it again here. Now, there are many reasons a product is not going to be doing well on Google, and that could be the image, the price, the landing page, essentially what we just spoke about. There are so many areas you can change before completely killing a product. I'm just gonna go through a few here of changes you can make today. If you are having issues with conversions on a particular product, you can make these changes and hopefully see an improvement in conversion rate or just performance in general. So if there is a product standing out for you that you're considering getting rid of, make sure you do these things before you do because it could completely revive your product. And in a matter of days or weeks, it could become a very, very good seller. Now I'll analyze and optimize the product's landing page first. By that, I mean improving the product description. Some product descriptions I had were very, very long and long-winded. I've cut these down and only included the key points for a product. No, it's very rare a customer is gonna sit there for you know, 10, 15 minutes analyzing your product page and reading into all the information you've got. You wanna essentially get to the point straight away at the top of the product description and give the customer those key benefits of the product because that, that is the information they are looking for and that is the information that they want to hear. And that is the information that could potentially be the difference between them buying and not buying that product. As well as the description, 
You could test things such as new product images, not just the main product image on Google. You could change the images you're using in your descriptions. You can add GIFs to your descriptions or videos. Now, it's, this is something I do a lot. Adding a GIF of the product in use is, is a very good strategy to use. And one other final thing I use is looks reviews for my product reviews on Shopify. There will be a link down below to looks there to add it to your store if you haven't already. Having good quality customer reviews for your products is very, very beneficial and will definitely help your conversion rate. But I can't stress enough, don't just go importing 50 or 100 views from AliExpress with, with poorly translated foreign language because that's not going to help your um, conversion rate. Having good quality reviews, well-written reviews, good reviews of good images as well. It's better to have five very high quality reviews on your product page rather than 50 product reviews that don't really make sense or show the product off very well. So definitely focus on that. And that there is just a few things that I check on my product page and changes I make before completely killing the product. And I've said this to a lot of people before in comments as well. In my opinion, there's no such thing as a bad product when it comes to Google ads or Google shopping ads. There's always something you could change with that product that could improve the performance of it. It is as simple as that. And that's the beauty with Google. There are so many changes you can make to it. You, you could go through and change so many areas of the product and one day it could be performing bad. You could then make those changes and then the next day you suddenly see results with it. So just analyze that product, tweak things every now and then if you're not pleased with the performance. Sooner or later, if you take this seriously, something is gonna change that is gonna help the performance of that product. So don't be in a rush to kill products if you're not pleased with the results. There's always something that can be done to improve that. Okay, next up here is gonna be using the wrong campaign types and bid strategies. This might seem very straightforward and simple, but a lot of people choose and select the wrong campaign types for e-commerce businesses, you know, the wrong bid strategies. I'm gonna recommend a few that you should not be using are ones you should probably lean towards using for your e-commerce brand, whether that's drop shipping, if you're not drop shipping and got an e-commerce brand, this will apply to you as well. So I'm just hopping over to my Google Ads account here. And when you're making a campaign, you have all these options here. Some people say create a campaign without a goals guidance, but for me, I always select sales because we're trying to get those sales, we're trying to get those orders on our website and optimizing for sales is something I've only ever used for e-commerce, so I would definitely recommend this. Some people might be clicking website traffic to get more visitors. The quality of that traffic will be a lot poorer. And obviously going back to the first point here, making sure your conversion goal and your conversion tracking is set up correctly because the last thing you want is to start running and paying for Google Ads and your conversion tracking not being done correctly. Now campaign type is the next option you'll have to choose here. You've got search, you've got performance max, display, shopping, video, and discovery. Now the main thing I run is Google Shopping Ads with obviously the Merchant Center product feed. I will always either choose shopping or performance max. I do run display and search campaigns, but they're supplementary to the shopping and performance max campaigns that spend the majority of my budget. Now I've made a video on the shopping category here. It is essentially a beginner's guide and a low budget testing strategy for Google Shopping and this is the thing you'd wanna use. Just go onto my channel and watch that video if you are launching Google Ads with a low budget. But if you've got a higher budget and got budget to spend, I do recommend performance max campaigns. And when I say a higher budget, I mean at least $100 a day for Performance Max if you're just starting out. If you're planning on spending less than that a day, I do recommend opting for shopping. This is manual standard shopping, which does have different bid strategies. And I am going to quickly hop into both here just to show you what bid strategies you should be using for each campaign type. Now, I'm just going to cover Performance Max first because I'm not actually running any standard shopping campaigns at the moment because I'm scaling. Performance Max just allows you to scale at a level standard shopping doesn't really allow you to do. So with Performance Max, you can see here, there are two bid strategies. You've got conversions, you've got conversion value. And for each of these, you've got a extra optional thing here where you can set a target cost per action. So a target cost per sale or cost per conversion, or with the conversion value, you can set a target return on ad spend. For me, I personally use the conversion value here and a target rise as well once scaling. But if you're just starting out with Pmax, I'd recommend just using maximized conversion value without a target ROAS. Once you've been running performance max campaigns for a while and see a um, consistent result, a consistent uh, ROAS you're achieving, it's always good to add this to control your spend and allow you to scale at a profit level you're happy with. So if you are running Pmax campaigns, take note of that. That is the bid strategy I recommend for that. Now I'm just hopping into my UK Google Ads account just to show you the bidding strategies for the standard shopping, just because I've not actually got any campaigns on my American site with that. But this is a turned off campaign. Again, I'm only using Performance Max on my UK site, but in the past, I used standard shopping when I was just starting out. And for me personally, I would always use manual CPC without enhanced CPC. 
I would not use anything like target row ads and stuff like that. A lot of people might opt for maximized clicks. For me, this has never really worked because its goal is to essentially get you the most clicks for the cheapest amount. And the quality of this traffic is never going to be as good as something that is focusing on conversions. So these are the three strategies you probably have available in your account. If you're, if you're running standard shopping campaigns, you'll have target rise, maximize clicks or maximize CPC. My personal recommendation is this. I always advise trying all bid strategies because some may work for you better than others. But for me, manual CPC works really well because you can set the bid and the max cost per click you're willing to pay on a product level as well. And obviously with standard shopping, you can begin to exclude negative keywords like that. You essentially have a lot more control with manual shopping, but it does limit you in terms of scalability as well. So that is just a quick overview of the campaign types and bid strategies that you should be using for e-commerce stores and drop shipping and stuff like that. If you are using anything I didn't mention just then, please do consider changing and testing different bid strategies and the ones I've recommended because that could be the reason you're not seeing very good results. And a final point here, guys, patience is key. I cannot stress this enough. In this day and age with the content you're probably consuming on YouTube related to Facebook ads and TikTok ads, you expect very quick results and overnight success, essentially. Now, you can see very quick results with Facebook and TikTok. I'm certainly not denying that. But Google Ads isn't like that. It can take time, sometimes a very, very long time. So please don't be discouraged and disheartened if you're not seeing results quickly. Giving Google enough time to learn and optimize is just a must have, especially these days because Google is leaning heavily towards automated machine learning there. They're essentially giving us less control over the campaigns and it's and basically saying to us, look, we know what's best for you. Leave it to us, leave it to our automated machine to optimize your campaigns. And because of this, it can take longer to optimize. But once you hit that sweet spot, once you've let it optimize and learn, you'll begin to see consistency. And that is such a good feeling with Google Ads. But it can take anywhere from four to six weeks until you begin to see any type of results with Google, sometimes even longer. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible to see results quickly with Google. I mean, that is possible, but I'm just giving you realistic expectations here. So please don't panic if you're not seeing any results after two days. And by this, I mean, if you're not seeing any impressions, clicks, pe people begin to panic, make loads of changes to their campaigns. Trust me, it doesn't do you any favors. Even things like after two weeks, you're not seeing many conversions. Please don't panic, guys, honestly. This is normal, very common. Even with new campaigns I make on my Google Ad accounts that do really well, it can take a month to see good results and consistency. But this point here is very, very important, especially for new accounts, because they are very, very slow to get going, new Google Ad accounts. Please don't panic. And of course, the long-term goal here is to see consistent results with Google. And you're not gonna see consistent results with Google if you're tweaking and changing things day in, day out. And once you stick at it, you can eventually get to a stage where I am with my Google accounts, I barely touch them. I probably look at my Google accounts one, two, three times a week just to see how they're doing in the performance, daily ad spend, things like that. I'm not in there every day, hours on end, making tweaks, making changes. If anything, most of the changes I'm making are on my website side of things, going back to a point earlier. It's me changing descriptions, titles, images, things like that to improve conversion rate. I rarely, rarely am making any changes on the actual Google ad account itself. But going back to the patience is key thing, you're not gonna see those consistent results if you're constantly changing your campaigns. And by changing your campaigns, I mean, changing your budgets, your bid strategies, your target rise, the active products and things like that. You need to be patient. And I know it's difficult when you are seeing Google eating up your budget. And if you are tight on a budget with Google Ads, I do recommend checking out the low budget beginner's guide strategy that I do have on my channel for standard shopping because it will allow you to have a bit of control and make sure Google isn't gonna go crazy and just rinse all your money at once. So guys, I hope you have enjoyed this detailed video on five reasons as to why your Google Ads might not be working. I hope you can take some of these points on board and implement them into your business to hopefully see an improvement in results with Google Ads. I do have a Google Ads agency, so if you want us to take over your Google Ad account, manage and grow it for you, please shoot me a message on Twitter or Instagram. I'm happy to set you guys up with that. Google can be very daunting for new users, so if you are interested in us managing and growing your Google account, please do get in touch. Other than that, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.